I had a dinner with Ivanka, Jared, and Josh. And then after talking to them and really sitting with Jared and sitting with Josh and finding out other pieces of information, I was like, wow, these guys might have really been holding Trump back. Uh, I did not plan my life to go into politics. I uh, had a good life. I have a great wife, a great family. I was uh, working in business. I had several companies. And uh, my father-in-law uh, announced he was running for president. And he was building a very entrepreneurial campaign. He was definitely an outsider candidate. He didn't have all the traditional um, uh, entourage that came with a politician. And so I kept getting called on to do more and more in the campaign. And so I kept getting called on to do more and more in the campaign. And so I kept getting called on to do more and more in the campaign. And then after talking to them and really sitting with Jared and sitting with Josh, and finding out other pieces of information, I was like, wow, these guys might have really been holding Trump back. And he also believed in you and gave you this big portfolio. I think that, you know, for your critics, I'm not just quiet as, like, you, for politics, you have like a very small resume, and you have this big, big portfolio. Uh, what do you say to people who say, like, uh, what qualifies you to go and take on these tough issues, like, all around the world? Like, I think that's one of the big questions people have. Why, why should we have confidence in you to do all this stuff? Well, I think the first thing is that the president trusts me. I think the first thing is that the president trusts me. I think the first thing is that the president trusts me. Jared is um, truly outstanding. He's, he's, he was very successful when he was in the private sector. He's a high-quality person. I'm a very honest man. I think he knows that uh, every uh, task he's given me uh, from the start of the campaign through, uh, I've been able to do it quietly, I've been able to do it effectively, I've been able to deliver results. These guys might have really been holding Trump back. Uh, Jared has done a fantastic job. People don't uh, really understand the things that he's able to do. Look, I went to an Ivy League school. I was a good student. I'm a very smart person. I, I know what I'm saying. He's done a fantastic job on this, and you and your team, uh, nobody else could have done it. I don't think anybody else could have done it. Nobody else could have done it. I don't think anybody else could have done it. Nobody else could have done it. I don't think anybody else could have done it. In America, if we want, we have to we have to respect greatness when we see it, and we can't smack it in the face at the at the cost of some <coughs> vote splitting, at the cost of like blowing somebody up that could sell some T-shirts. If you see something that's great, you got to respect it. And Jared has done a fantastic job, people don't uh, really understand the things that he's able to do. And being very much a handler. Only one person tells Donald what to do, and that is Donald Trump. You know, I, I always noticed that there was only one of us that was elected, it was him, and so <laughs> if I disagreed, I was grateful that he gave me the opportunity to do it, but I was an advisor, sometimes he listened, sometimes he didn't, but we had a lot of fun. And being very much a handler. Okay, talk to me about 2024. Would you like to, uh, when, when might he decide whether he's going to run or not? Uh, you know, nobody can speak for him. Nobody can speak for him. Nobody can speak for him. Right then, they love to just look at me or look at Trump like we're so crazy and that they're the businessmen. Jared uh, Kushner defends his father-in-law at every turn. Trump. Tell me what it's like to have him as your father-in-law and tell me something about him that might be surprising. I can definitely say that there's a, he's, he's a very uh, special person, and, and I've really enjoyed getting to know him over the last, um, I guess, decade since I, I met Ivanka. And uh, working with him over the last couple of years has been very interesting. The one thing I, I will say about this president is he's accomplished a lot in a couple of years. And, uh, and you know, I find that he's a very open-minded person. I find he's a pragmatist. The more time I spend with him, working with him, the more... Uh, I realize that I, I, I don't bet against his instincts. His instincts, I think, are absolutely phenomenal and on, on trade, on, uh, on a lot of things. I mean, we'll have issues where there'll be a lot of conventional wisdom, you know, saying that it should be one way and he'll be able to process it and say, no, that's wrong and go this way. And most of the time he ends up being right. The president has a very long career of 
accomplishing things that a lot of people uh, say were impossible. And they love to just look at me or look at Trump like we're so crazy and that they're the businessmen. What we witnessed was one of the biggest hands of poker in the history of the world. And I show how President Trump played it very strategically. He was measured and ultimately he achieved outcomes that nobody else thought would occur. Um, and really did things that benefited American business, protecting our intellectual property, protecting our crown jewel industries, and also in the end, really helping America's farmers who were badly hurt by, by poor uh, policies in previous administration. Uh, both sides really trust the president. And I think that that's uh, very important because while uh, I've been working uh, the, the, the problem for the president, uh, the fact that both sides trust him and know that he has the right intentions and the right creativity and the right uh, desires to see this happen has been uh, very important. And Jared, I mean, you know, I did actually speak to Donald Trump um, on Friday and he told me how incredibly brilliant he thinks Jared is. He called him my son, not even son-in-law, my son. The thing is, I ain't got a problem with looking stupid. Well, Jared's done an outstanding job. I think he's been treated very unfairly. He's a high-quality person. Uh, Jared is... Um, Truly outstanding. He's, he's, he was very successful when he was in the private sector. He's working on peace in the Middle East. They've always said peace in the Middle East, peace between the Palestinians and Israel is the toughest deal of any deal there is. How come I've heard this all my life? That as a former deal maker, although now you could say maybe I'm more of a deal maker than ever before, you have no choice as president to do it right. But the hardest deal to make of any kind is between the Israelis and the Palestinians. We're actually making great headway. Jerusalem was the right thing to do. We took that off the table. But Jared Kushner is right in the middle of that. And he's an extraordinary deal maker. And if he does that, that will be an incredible accomplishment and a very important thing for our country. So when I think about all of these things that Jared, you know, somehow doesn't get enough credit for with his work and what is it his work in israel or his work in palette what what is this you know where he made these peace treaties where was that do you know the facts on this right here so i'm like well, are you a political person then no not political at all I'm non-political, I'm politically incorrect. Yeah, I don't, I'm not into politics either. I'm not into politics, I'm not into politics. I'm not into politics either. You are? No, not at all. No? Yeah, it's just not, politics are a hobby for some people. Like watching sports, watching politicians, watching the news, talking about it. What do you think about this? What do you think about that? What do you think about this? What do you think about that? I don't get into it. I like looking at clothes and art and movies, like, and making music, so. Funny, funny, funny. I, well, I think that was between Israel and, and some of the Arab nations. I just think it was to make money. Donald Trump also announcing a big role for his son-in-law, naming his daughter Ivanka's husband as a senior White House advisor. This news is coming on Jared Kushner's 36th birthday. This was a close confidant for Donald Trump behind the scenes in the campaign. And now he's going in as the senior advisor to the president. He'll be there in the West Wing. We do know that he won't be taking a salary when he's in there. I just think it was to make money. When we do know that he won't be taking a salary when he's in there, that he won't be taking a salary when he's in there. I just think it was to make money. Well, Jared's done an outstanding job. I think he's been treated very unfairly. He's a high quality person. Uh, he works for nothing, just so, you know, nobody ever reports that, but he gets zero. He doesn't get a salary. I just think it was to make money. He works for nothing. He works for nothing. He works for nothing. He gets zero. He doesn't get a salary. He gets zero. He doesn't get a salary. He doesn't get a salary. You know, occult science, you'll know that they call light darkness and darkness light. You know, occult science, you'll know that they call light darkness and darkness light. You know, occult science, you'll know that they call light darkness and darkness light. And I took the opportunity to look as stupid as possible. I just think it was to make money. Dishonorable men honor money. 
Why do you talk yeah. so much about money nowadays? Like, I don't understand why everything is so much about money and, and stuff to you now. Because you need product. You need to own something to have a voice at this point. Because I'm telling you... You already got them. You don't need to own something to have a voice. Yeah, you had a voice. When you got on stage and you said, George Bush don't care about black people, you was using your voice. You don't need money I to have a voice. I could use my voice, but what happened if y'all don't buy no other albums? Then that, that voice, people gonna say, oh, he like Arsenio Hall, and he was turning up too much, and now you fired. But when you got money, can't nobody fire you. No, you know what makes me buy your albums? The great music you produce. You know what makes me not buy your albums? This new narcissistic, egotistical, egotistical personality you got. That's what turns me off. It makes me say, I'm not going to the show. I don't want him around. I don't want to buy his record. Because I'm influential. <clears throat> the reason why I'm influential, the same reason why you want me to come to your show or you want me to wear your product is the same reason why you got to involve me and you got to cut me in. You know what I'm saying? People got fat without me. You cutting me in. Yeah, I'm telling my man Kanye what's the next man doing it. You know what I'm saying? The man that just picked up the mic and going to do what he got to do and make history. Holla back. Tim Westwood was really good. Oh, man, what you doing? You bling bling? You bling bling and you fresh to death was gone. I'm just a little insecure, you know what I'm saying? I'm so self-conscious, so I gotta hide behind all this jewelry right here. <laughs> I don't mean to make you mad, it's just, just feeling that way right now. I just think it was to make money. And you gotta cut me in. You know what I'm saying? People got fat without me. You cutting me in. You know what I'm saying? So when they told me I couldn't get no royalties, it's like, wait a second, you want me to work for Nike for two more years? I can't. What I tell my daughter in two years that I've been working trying to make Nike still hot, and I still ain't, ain't don't have you know the backing to really support and protect her. Because she in a position of a level of royalty like like uh, the prince and the princess out in London. But they got more paper, they got heritage. So when I think about all of these things that Jared, you know, somehow doesn't get enough credit for with his work. And what is it, his work in Israel or his work in Palestine? What, what is this? You know where he made these peace treaties? Where was that? Do you know the facts on this right here? So I'm like... I, well, I think that was between Israel and, and some of the Arab nations. I just think it was to make money. Well, Jared's done an outstanding job. I think he's been treated very unfairly. He's a high-quality person. Jared is... Um, Truly outstanding. He's, he's, he was very successful when he was in the private sector. He's working on peace in the Middle East. They've always said peace in the Middle East, peace between the Palestinians and Israel is the toughest deal of any deal there is. The hardest deal to make of any kind is between the Israelis and the Palestinians. We're actually making great headway. But Jared Kushner is right in the middle of that. And he's an extraordinary deal maker. And if he does that, that will be an incredible accomplishment and a very important thing for our country. Our peace plan began with the belief that an undivided Jerusalem and a more secure Israel would be stabilizing and of benefit to the entire Middle East. Especially after the accords were signed, what we saw and experienced was that regional stability also derived from a sense of community. Diplomatic recognition is a formal acknowledgement by one country that another should be engaged as a member of the international community. In international politics, without mutual recognition, there is no community. 
For 70 years, Israel was not recognized by most of its closest neighbors and had not been included in the larger community of the Middle East. Even by the United States military, which considered Israel to be within UCOM, the military's European command, rather than CENTCOM, the division responsible for the Middle East. That changed within the first year of the Abraham Accords. This is perhaps the greatest hope demonstrated by the Accords, that in very tangible ways, for the first time in far too many years, Israel's neighbors have welcomed it into the regional community. And so if you look at the Arab League now, six out of the 21 current members recognize Israel. Let's get to seven. It's amazing. Let's get to eight. It's almost a third. It is the first positive momentum that we've had in a generation for peace between Israel and its neighbors. And it could lead to the end of the Arab-Israeli conflict if stewarded in the proper fashion. You know, I'm pretty old. I fought the Yom Kippur War. Then we grew up on the what's called uh, the Israeli-Arab conflict. Now with Egypt, Jordan, UAE, Bahrain, Morocco, Sudan, Sudan. Basically, is Israeli-Arab conflict fade away? For me, as a Sabra who was born here, with this independence war against seven militaries, with the Six Day War, with the Yom Kippur War, that's a big thing. But Jared Kushner is right in the middle of that, and he's an extraordinary deal maker. And if he does that, that will be an incredible accomplishment and a very important thing for our country. He works for nothing, just so, you know, nobody ever reports that, but he gets zero. He doesn't get a salary. And you got to cut me in. You know what I'm saying? People got fat without me. You cutting me in. I apologize to Mosa Kweli, but is it cool to rap about gold if I told the world I copped it from Ghana and Mali? The first nigga with a Benz in a backpack, Cardi Lenz, Ice Rams in a backpack. I always said if I rapped, I'd say something significant, but now I'm rapping about money hoes and rims again. 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 Because people be having negotiating while I was negotiating with Nike. They said, okay, cool, Kanye. You've been screaming up and down. We're going to give you a deal for Yeezy, finally. Because they was marginalizing me let me only design two shoes over a five-year period people talking about the red october that's the design for three years ago you know how many ideas i got you know say so they try to marginalize me and then they say look we're gonna give you four million dollars a year to design this i said what about royalties they said look you know you're not a professional athlete so you don't get no royalties i said look man i go i go to any of these arenas and play one on nobody and yeah, you talk about some rich nigga shit i'll tell you some just a regular man shit mm -hmm. that every man deals with my girlfriend has a child. We have a baby. You make decisions in your life based on providing for your family. Mm -hmm. I love Nike. I loved Nike, you know? So it was heartbreaking for me to have to leave Nike, but they refuse to allow me to get royalty on my shoe, but they refuse to allow me to get royalty on my shoe, but they refuse to allow me to get royalty on my shoe. And you gotta cut me in. You know what I'm saying? People got fat without me. You cutting me in. But Jared Kushner, uh, he works for nothing, just so, you know, nobody ever reports that, but he gets zero. He doesn't get a salary. And I knew I had the hottest shoe. And I knew I had the hottest shoe, shoe, shoe. But Jared Kushner, he's working on peace in the Middle East. And I knew I had the hottest shoe. He's working on peace in the Middle East. The hottest shoe. Peace in the Middle East. 
And I knew I had the hottest shoe in the world. I knew Yeezy was the hottest brand in the world. Peace in the Middle East, peace between the Palestinians and Israel is the toughest deal of any deal. In America, if we want it, we have to, we have to respect greatness when we see it. And we can't smack it in the face at the, at the cost of some vote splitting, at the cost of like blowing somebody up that could sell some t-shirts. If you see something that's great, you got to respect it. But Jared Kushner's right in the middle of that. And he's an extraordinary deal maker. And if he does that, that will be an incredible accomplishment and a very important thing for our country. Uh, he works for nothing, just so, you know, nobody ever reports that. But he gets zero. He doesn't get a salary. I just think it was to make money. An incredible accomplishment and a very important thing for our country. Uh, he works for nothing, just so, you know, nobody ever reports that. But he gets zero. He doesn't get a salary. I just think it was to make money. But I couldn't get royalty, but I couldn't get royalty, but I couldn't get royalty. I, I believe that I'm going to be the head of the first trillion dollar company. He just said, look, you can make 5,000 shoes or 10,000 shoes if some of the proceeds to your favorite charity. And we'll give some of the proceeds to your favorite charity. And we'll give some of the proceeds to your favorite charity. But it was nothing to build. You know, now we're building factories. They wouldn't let me build anything. We try to create generational wealth. Yeah. We try to create generational wealth. Yeah. We try to create generational wealth. Yeah. But Jared Kushner, uh, he works for nothing, just so, you know, nobody ever reports that, but he gets zero. He doesn't get a salary. I just think it was to make money. I want to remind you that in the occult world, in the esoteric world, good becomes evil and evil becomes good. In the occult world, in the esoteric world, good becomes evil and evil becomes good. We try to create generational wealth. Yeah. We try to create generational wealth. Yeah. We try to create generational wealth. Yeah. He believed so much that he was going to get a record deal. He dropped out of school. I told him I finished school and I started my own business. They say, oh, you graduated. No, I decided I was finished. I'm finna turn this class clown shit to crazy G's. The crazy G's. The crazy G's. So I live by two words. Fuck you, pay me. So I live by two words. Fuck you, pay me. So I live by two words. Fuck you, pay me. But Jared Kushner's. He works for nothing, just so, you know, nobody ever reports that, but he gets zero. He doesn't get a salary. And if he does that, that will be an incredible accomplishment and a very important thing for our country. I just think it was to make money. I was at uh, Chris's house and expressed to me that he had received a royalty because he was a store. Mm -hmm. And I'm easy. And they wouldn't give me a royalty. And I'm easy. And they wouldn't give me a royalty. And I'm easy and they wouldn't give me a royalty i just think it was to make money and you gotta cut me in you know what i'm saying people got fat without me you cutting me in As spends his money no other musician comes close to being as wealthy as kanye west even sir paul mccartney is only worth 1.2 billion yeah only even though he spends like crazy kanye does put away some cash for a rainy day his stock portfolio is worth at least 122 million the crown jewel in his collection of mansions is undoubtedly his $60 million abode in Hidden Hills, California. It's filled with extremely expensive appliances and furniture, including a bathroom sink worth a staggering $30,000. Kanye and Kim purchased their 15,667 square foot Hidden Hills mansion way back in 2014 for a mere $20 million, and then spent another $20 million on renovations. Impressive mansion sits on three acres of pristine land, complete with an expansive lawn, elegant fountains, and multiple vineyards. Kanye even purchased the neighboring property for $30 million. He wants to own as much land in the area as possible. That's why he purchased 300 additional acres of land in nearby Calabasas. Yeezy has owned a number of impressive properties over the years, including a 2,427 square foot condo in New York worth 4.7 million and a 9,000 square foot mansion in Bel Air worth 17.8 million. He sold those properties to buy two ranches in the great state of Wyoming. In addition to 700 head of sheep and 160 head of cattle, Kanye's $14 million ranch has an event venue, maintenance shop, office building, sheds, corrals, a barn, and a state-of-the-art shooting gallery. Kanye enjoys the farm life so much that he recently purchased a second ranch 100 miles away worth 15 million. Kanye's garage is filled with rare and expensive cars. He spends millions buying supercars and millions more customizing them. Practically every car in Kanye's collection has been customized to meet his exact specification. His $1.06 million Mercedes SLR Sterling Moss is so rare that only 75 units were made. The strongest vehicle in Kanye's collection is his $1.2 million red diamond truck. The armored truck features ruby and gold badging and bulletproof glass. It even came with three bottles of extremely expensive vodka, like the most expensive vodka in the world. But Jared Kushner's, uh, he works for nothing, just so, you know, nobody ever reports that, but he gets zero. 
He doesn't get a salary. I just think it was to make money. His closet is filled with designer clothes. Even his sweatpants and hoodies cost a pretty penny. Yeezy has often been spotted wearing watches worth more than $100,000. His watch collection is probably worth more than your house or car. Some of the most expensive pieces in Kanye's watch collection include one that's worth $46,200 and another one that's worth $140,000. Yeezy owns numerous Rolexes, including a $17,990 President Day Day, a $25,990 Cosmograph Daytona, a $10,990 Submariner Vintage, and a $48,000 Yachtmaster 2. If you spot Kanye cruising around town or the red carpet, he'll likely be wearing gold chains around his neck. The more expensive, the better. He sported a three. $100,000 Egyptian-inspired King Horus gold necklace when he performed at the 2010 BET Awards. It looks like something Pharaoh would wear. But Jared Kushner's, uh, he works for nothing, just so, you know, nobody ever reports that, but he gets zero. He doesn't get a salary. And if he does that, that will be an incredible accomplishment and a very important thing for our country. That will be an incredible accomplishment and a very important thing for our country. That will be an incredible accomplishment and a very important thing for our country. Uh, he works for nothing, just so, you know, nobody ever reports that, but he gets zero. He doesn't get a salary. I just think it was to make money. Raise your hand if you got a private plane. Don't be embarrassed. There's definitely some people with some private planes tonight. <laughs> I know that's not like the thing about, you know, but it's real, man. It's like so many people just end up being the face of something, just doing a one-off commercial, just doing that. And the guys that hired them got the private jet. <laughs> and I want to be one of those guys. <laughs> I'm going to be one of those guys. I just think it was to make money. This is probably going to go all downhill from here. I think the plane, I'll, I'll, I'll land it like that. But it's very serious. We're here to make amazing product that we love, that also sells, that makes money. But Jared Kushner's, uh, he works for nothing, just so, you know, nobody ever reports that, but he gets zero. He doesn't get a salary. But Jared Kushner's, Jared is um, truly outstanding. He's, he's, he was very successful when he was in the private sector. He's working on peace in the Middle East. They've always said peace in the Middle East, peace between the Palestinians and Israel is the toughest deal of any deal. Uh, he works for nothing, just so, you know, nobody ever reports that, but he gets zero. He doesn't get a salary. We really nice, like nice things. Everyone likes nice things in here. I love, like, I want a house equal or better than Calvin Klein's house in the Hampton, so I can bleach to generate chairs. It's got the clean windows and stuff. <laughs> I want that thing. And you got to cut me in. You know what I'm saying? People got fat without me. You cutting me in. I, I believe that I'm going to be the head of the first trillion dollar company. So I live by two words. But you pay me. But Jared Kushner's, uh, he works for nothing, just so, you know, nobody ever reports that. But he gets zero. He doesn't get a salary. I just think it was to make money. <laughs> uh, I don't know how to turn this into something that's helpful and impressive. The game, our public is here to clean this up right when they get off stage. <laughs> If he don't look good, we don't look good. This is our president. Why did you like him, by the way? Come on, man, Trump's this shit. What do you mean? He has his own buildings. What are we talk about. You like Ivanka? Yeah. I sold my soul to the devil. I sold my soul to the devil. I sold my soul to the devil.